Hi all, this is Maria Clark at Sweet Willow Designs and welcome to my studio. Hey, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I'd love it if you would subscribe. If you enjoy the video content, please give me a thumbs up and uh, leave me a comment. Thank you guys, I love you all. This project has an ebook that's available in my Etsy shop. It's a 16 page ebook and it's got all the colors. It's got some full size patterns for you to use in a lot of different sizes, some mitten designs, and then some mittens for you to do your own uh, designs with. We'll use an 8x8 canvas panel. And for the paint, I'll be using the Deco Art Americana in Gray Sky, Baby Blue, Ultra Blue Deep, and White. I'll also be using the DuraClear Matte Varnish. And I will be using a number two flat brush. Uh, this is to fill in the mittens. I'll be using an eraser cap. I'll be using my Bropy screwdriver set, which is completely optional, of course. And I'll be using my regular Crystallite crochet hooks and a pair, a set of nail dotters. So for the background, I've got my 8x8 panel and I have coated it with several coats of the gray sky. And then I'm going to be using a sponge technique. So I have a, a natural sponge here. I'll be using the baby blue and the gray sky and I'm going to mix the colors together to get a slightly bluer tone for the sponged effect. Now I want this to be really, really subtle so I'm not going for a big change in the color but just enough to give me a little background. So I'll mix up some of that paint and then I will start to be able to use my sponging technique. The natural sponges give you a really kind of rough sponge texture, but use a lot of different tools that you might have. Even a regular sponge um, would be great. And I'll just go ahead and lightly sponge that on, kind of focusing on the outside. I'll do a little bit in the center, but not a whole lot. I'll just want to get a little bit of color on, um, on this canvas. All right, now we're ready to start uh, our design. Here's the traceable from the um, from the ebook, and I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. Now, this one I'm going to cut. There's a little line on that outside row of dots. I'm going to cut right in the middle of that, and that'll give me my outside edge. You can decide how you want to line this up. There's lots of options here. There are eight mittens. And you can, you can kind of uh, make some choices as to how you want to line them up to your canvas. We're going to fold this in quarters so I can find the center and cut that out. I'll just snip off the center there. And that'll help me with my placement. Using a ruler, I will find the center of the canvas, and this is just to help me line this up. Those light, those uh, marks are kind of light because it's a light background, but I think uh, you might be able to get a good sense of it. I'm basically going to use that to line my uh, pattern up. A little bit of tape once I get it lined up. And that tape just will keep it from slipping as I uh, draw my pattern on. And then I'll be using the Serral Transfer Paper. I've used that piece of transfer paper quite a few times, so you get good use out of them. And I'll just slip that under. Now, on this particular pattern, I'm mostly drawing the grid. I'm not going to draw every single one of those dots. I am going to draw the center, and then I'm going to draw the circles where I want those dots to be. And that'll give me good placement. And then I'll also draw the lines uh, for the grid and my mittens. And the rest of it, I think I can follow along with the pattern easily enough that I don't need to draw every single one of these. I will draw these placement of those little um, oval dots. Now using my number two flat and the color Ultra Blue Deep. Now this is a very dark um, paint. The dots actually are dark. The mittens were perfect. I mean, the, the color I just loved. The dots I thought were a little bit dark. So I might consider, um, you know, a different color of blue, but you really do want a high contrast. So I'm using my number two flat to just fill in these mittens. 
and uh, the flat brush gives me a nice edge. So it's, it's easy to make and fill in these mittens. I am going to not, I'm not going to put multiple coats on here because I kind of liked the sort of variegated look of the paint with one coat. Um, it kind of looked, had the sort of the texture, the knitted texture. So I kind of like that a, a, quite a lot. And I'm going to dot right on top of this. So uh, it's giving me just a little bit of a background color. See how that's a little bit mottled? I really like that look. It gives a lot of good texture. Just continue filling that in. This would be fun in lots of different, if you had all the mittens different colors, that would be really fun. Okay, we'll just do one more and then we'll do that all the way around for each of the eight mittens in this in this design. It has been snowing here in Colorado, so um, our Piper, our four-year-old granddaughter, has her mittens out and it's always such a fun time to be able to get your mittens and your heavy jacket and go play in the snow. Okay, all eight mittens are done and now I am ready to start painting. I'm using the pattern. Um, these are full size, size patterns and what's nice about them is we don't all use the same tools so you can use the pattern to decide what tool size is appropriate for you. I'm going to go ahead and place my center dot. Now see how much darker the dots are than the mittens um, and that's just because the paint is really concentrated. So consider that when you're choosing your colors um, what, what would be great you know, great uh, blue for you to use here. For the center, I use my G64 millimeter and then a set of nail daughters. For the next ring, I use the G64 millimeter. And now I am using the pencil cap eraser to make my oval dots. Now one thing I wanted to mention about the pencil cap, it's like any other tool, you know, they have to be cleaned off or your your dots are not quite what you're expecting. Um, so I actually, I started with one that, uh, pencil cap eraser that I've been using and you can see that I'm not liking exactly how some of those dots are coming out. So I'm actually going to trade that out and put a fresh eraser cap on there so I can get a little bit nicer oval. Now I'm using a small nail dotter and putting a dot uh, for reference and this is going to help me with my spacing. I'm going to select the tool size that's best. I'm keeping it a little bit smaller than the actual dot that's on the pattern because the um, paint spreads. So now I'm using my K 10.5, 6.5 and placing a row on that line. large nail dotter and I will walk the dots around. So the base coat for this particular pattern is all the one color of blue because I'm trying to simulate the Colorado snow so I've got kind of that gray blue sky um, and then uh, you know some deep blues. Hopefully that gives you the sense of snow. All right another little reference dot. And then I'm using my pencil cap eraser to put down a little three petal design here. 
Now this is with the fresh eraser cap. Doesn't that look better? And I've done that all the way around. Small nail dotter. My G6 four millimeter for a larger dot here. And then my large nail dotter. And then I'm using my L11 eight millimeter for this larger dot. And I'll walk the dots around. And I've done that all the way around. Now there's a little change up in the pattern on the sequence here. So in between these mittens there are two different designs actually right in here. And you can see there's one section which is the section that we'll paint now. And then there's a slightly different design for the other section. large nail dotter and a reference dot. Check my size. I'm using the P16 11.5 millimeter. And then my G6 four millimeter for a large top center dot there. And then I'll use my large nail dotter to walk the dots around. Got a little smudge. I'm going to get that off right away so that I don't have to repaint that. And then I'll use a small nail dotter to put a crown at the top. Okay, for the second sequence, um, I walk the dots up. You can see there, I just used a large nail dotter and walked my dots straight up. Um, straight up on the line that I'd placed. Now I'm going to place a ring around the outside. Do a little cleanup here. Now I've got my uh, grid marks on here and this is of course really helpful. Those of you that are new to dotting, I find making the actual ring like this to be one of the more difficult tasks. So I like to have some guidelines. I can then you know put my outside marks, cut it in half, and then a half again or as many times as you feel like you need, you would like to to get the number of dots you want. Um, but it's helpful to have this guide here. Um, I am going to go back in and place a small dot in between so I want a little bit of space here. And I will do that all the way around. This is a really fun whimsical type pattern. I really uh, had so much fun putting the little mittens on there. That was really fun. All right, I've dotted all the way around the outside edge. And now I'm going to go back in with a small nail dotter and just drop a little bit of blue in between those dots. You could of course do anything you wanted here. There's lots of different design options that you could use. Okay, now I have um, let this dry and I'm ready to go in. I'm using my Bropey screwdriver set for some of the dots here. Um, they make a nice oval dot and a smaller size. These are optional. You know, don't, don't, um, if you don't have them, that's, that's fine. Don't worry about it. 
uh, just use a regular size dots or maybe you have something around the house that would work for you. So now I'm going to start to do the designs on these mittens. And I'm going to have four different designs, so I'm going to repeat each design twice. And um, that'll give me a, sort of a nice uh, symmetry. You can do uh, dots, the same pattern on all of them. That would look really, really nice. Or you could do a different pattern on each one. It's really up to you what you think you'd like to do. Um, they're in the... In the um, ebook there are the patterns that I used for these they're they're a little bit larger size so you can see them a little bit better but you could let your creativity flow here and just do any kind of design you wanted to that white is really giving a nice contrast on top of this blue Didn't like that so much. So we'll just take it off with a damp Q-tip and go right back over it. This is the third Colorado snow design that I've done. I did a couple last year, and um, I've got at least a couple more that I want to do this year. I'm thinking of doing one in the Frozen colors for the movie Frozen. That purple and that blue is so pretty, so I think I'll, I'll do something in that. I put in the ebook, I put some larger size, some three inch and four inch mitten uh, outlines that you could print on some cardstock and dot for tags or maybe for, for an ornament on the tree or a card uh, or a table setting, a Christmas table setting. That would be really cute with some with the people's names on it. Although we're still not planning to have major gatherings this year. Um, so a little bit... Um, a little bit sad about that but um, you know we we need to um, we need to be safe during this time you know we have some um, chronic illnesses in our family and so we want to we want to not introduce too much risk but these would make great Christmas ornaments or um, as I said a card something like that would be really really cute all right that was pattern number one for the mittens here's pattern number two And I'm just going to let you watch these unfold. On this one, I'm just going to draw a line up the center because I'm going to use those little ropey screwdrivers to, um, this is the smallest one in the set, to make sort of like a, a cable knit design. So these are sweet little uh, oval dots, which I think are really nice. And then I'll just offset a little bit to get that cable. Isn't that neat? I love the way that looks.
Okay, I finished all four of the designs and now what I'm going to do is do the other four and I'm just going to do them opposite each other. And here's what the finished piece is looking like so far. Let's take a little closer look at that. Isn't that fun with those mittens? All right, now everything's dry and I'm going to start top dotting. I'm just using white as my top dot. Very small nail dotter to get the uh, white on these teeny little dots. And I'll put a little bit of white to fill in some space here. Now I'm using the little Bropy screwdriver to put a little oval dot on those pencil eraser cap dots that I put down. And that's a nice compliment. They complement each other very, very nicely. All right, I've done all of my top dotting. Now I'm going to let that dry. And then I'm going to start with my next layer of top dots. So that's all dry. I've got another layer of top dots, a couple layers actually. So before I frame this, I've let this, of course, dry really, really well. And I've got three coats of the uh, matte, the DuraClear matte varnish on it. And that matte has a slight little bit of sheen, and it's just enough for me. And I've got this really inexpensive frame from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to try something out. Now, you know I like the mixed media, so I'm going to try a little bit something here. And uh, you guys let me know what you think, uh, and I'll tell you how, how I think how I felt about it in the end. So this is an inexpensive frame. Let's get this opened up here. It does have a glass in it, which is nice. So you can put that aside if you want to use it for a different project. I just stick it back in there to give a little more stability. What's uh, good about this one, I want to just let you know, this it's got a little mat there, but it's also got this little foam uh, frame here. That is really good for you to keep um, in case you want to put a little spacer and put your painting behind glass. You need a spacer in there, so that would be fun. I'll show you that at some point. Okay, so here's the frame, kind of basic, simple frame. I like it. I think that looks nice. But I thought, I found these little snowflakes, uh, and they come in, I think there's like five or six different sizes of these snowflakes. And I thought what I would do is put them on the frame corners and see how I thought that might look because I, I thought the idea of snowflakes would be really fun. So I'm just going to play around with this and uh, try out some different design ideas and then I can just glue them down. I can actually dot on them. These are little buttons so they have the two holes. I'll need to fill those holes in. I usually just fill them in with a little bit of glue or something and let them dry and then dot right on top of them. So I'm just uh, trying out some different designs here to see what I think about that. I do like that. Um, I'm going to try some more here. Okay, now I'm just getting silly. That's too much. <laughs> so maybe a little bit on these opposite corners. Let's see what we think about that. I like that. I think that would be nice. Tell me what you think. Do you think that's a little too much or do you like it? All right. Well, that completes this project. I hope you've enjoyed it. Here is a picture of the project with the snowflake frame. And then here's a picture in a plain blue frame. And you could take that Dollar Tree frame and paint it with the same paint that you used um, for your painting. And that would look stunning. Um, so I, ab I absolutely love it. And in the end, I'm just sticking with the plain blue. Although I thought the snowflakes were really a lot of fun too. So maybe I'll do another one or another type of painting with the snowflakes, that would be really nice. Hey, I want to thank you so much for joining me in my studio. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks so much for joining me in my studio today. Take care.